Well, everybody, we did it. We did Lost Minds of Fandelver. But don't weep because it's over. Rejoice for the, for the rest of the quote. Now, there are a couple of bits of news around this, okay? So I am still making Lost Minds of Fandelver content but it's all gonna be over on Patreon. I'm gonna be doing write-ups of the specific stuff that I've talked about in these videos. I'm gonna be making new resources for little tidbits. I'm gonna be updating old resources because I've got a couple of people doing calligraphy for me to make fancy letters. That's gonna be quite fun. And I also wanna make some original content. I'd like to make an adventure, a one-shot of a prequel when everybody gets to meet Guntran. So look out for that over the next two or three months. But we're doing some other stuff on the channel now. We're gonna do a series on Storm King's Thunder and we're gonna do a series on Candlekeep Mysteries. We're gonna get in-depth guides for both of those. But you might remember that I promised you at the end of this Lost Minds of Fandelver series, we would go through all of your best stories in the comments, all of your best experiences and celebrate together. So without any further ado, let's hear about all the best stories from the Lost Minds of Fandelver from your comments. So this is the first thing I wanna show. One of the people on Patreon made this map of Phandalin as a Western. Isn't this cool? This was made by Gaston. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Really ties in the fact that it is a Western. So let's check out the comments on the first video. Oh, I remember this comment. This is really fun. So Dom says, seven sessions. Ha, huh. I'm 19 sessions in and they haven't cleared the ruffians. <laughs> but then Justin says, 33 sessions. It took them 33 sessions to complete the Lost Minds of Phandalva. Oh, I don't have this. I don't have the stamina. I don't have the stamina to play a campaign for that long. This second video was all about the Cragmore hideout and that first dungeon. Let's see what Tyler did. Uh, one of my players calmed the wolves in the kennel with an animal handling, and the group explored the chimney on the other side. One of my dumber fighter players tried to climb the chimney and saw Clark sitting in his office. He decided that right then, with his head peeking out of the chimney, was the best time to strike up a casual conversation with Clark. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? What are you doing, Reed? Having a, having a bit of a read there? What's, how you going, buddy? Yeah, yeah, just calm your dogs, yeah. All right, we'll see you later. Peace out, buddy. <laughs> Our mate Ben says that he's got six players and they steamrolled the whole hideout and the battle with Clark, but they haven't gotten to Yemek yet. So Ben's thinking about, well, this is in the past. Ben's already done this. Past Ben was thinking about adding a hobgoblin attempting to make a deal with Yemek. That's pretty cool. Colonel Walshark says that these videos are amazing, but I found them two sessions deep into the module, so I've had to decide that Sildar has the puzzle box. A lot of people had this problem where they were already halfway through the session, their campaign, and then they went, ooh, I wanna add in this puzzle box and I wanna do some of these things that Matt's suggesting. And a lot of people have found ways to do it really well, like retroactively add in the puzzle box, retroactively add in this kind of black spider relationship. Um, it kind of works. Okay, that was fun. I think we're getting to Fandolin. Ooh, this was the best thumbnail. I put so much effort into this one. <laughs> so this video was all about kind of seeding quests in Fandolin and role-playing a couple of the NPCs and then deleting like a dozen others. <laughs> I remember this comment. I love how I'm a Texan dungeon master and often give my NPCs English accents. And here we have a DM with an English accent giving his NPCs Southern accents, meaning Bart the innkeeper. Hey, I'm not English. Don't do this to me. I'm Australian. <laughs> Chris says that one thing that worked for them was uh, Sister G, Sister Gorel. I took what you said about her being able to speak with the dead, but the reason she wants to be able to do it in my game is that she wants to say goodbye. Oh no, she wants to say goodbye to a recently deceased dog and wants to play fetch with it one last, I'm gonna cry, wants to play fetch with it one last time. It gave me a good reason to give her precedence in using her ability after the players return her spellbook and create a pretty good tug at the heartstrings type of moment. That is lovely. It's like I said with the wheezing asthmatic cat named Buddy, Man, players love animals. And if they don't love animals, get out of my game. <laughs> there is another thing from Discord that I really want to flag here. It's a real tragic story. So Alex Jurassic, uh, one of my patrons, so she had the black spider get introduced in that session and she has the French accent, all this kind of stuff. Uh, hello, I am the black spider. And one of her players fell in love with the black spider, right? And they've had kind of like a a little bit of romantic energy between them. The black spider is clearly leading this person on, right? And the thing is, this black spider person has introduced themselves as Nezar, not as the black spider, so they don't know that it's the villain specifically. The player is in for a surprise when it gets revealed. 
But what happened is the player's brother, <laughs> the player's brother was showing um, this player pictures from a D&D book and they were flipping through it and pointed to this one person and go, oh, that's the bad guy from The Lost Minds of Fandelver. That's, that's Nezar. And the player goes, <laughs> this is, the player says, oh, that's the name of my French girlfriend. <laughs> and that's how that player found out that Nazar was the black spider. And now Alex has to do all this juggling to try and say, oh, no, you've had it spoiled for you, which is a bit of a shame. But on the plus side, having a player say, that's the name of my French girlfriend is just a lovely moment. That player must have been so invested. Now, Alex actually has a YouTube channel. You should go check it out. And they have an Etsy store where they make potions of healing with dice in them that I bought and they are good. This next video was all about the side quests like the Agatha thing and the Necromancer and the Tribor Trail uh, stuff. So let's take a look at what people had here. I remember this comment from Victoria. This is so cool. Victoria says, my party's request in return for the puzzle box was that the black spider travel alongside them and help them out with side quests before going on to the Wave, Wave Echo Cave. I thought that they'd ask for money, but I couldn't have asked for anything better if I'd tried. So she's been sharing tidbits of her I'm making this up on the fly tragic backstory as a drow art outcast, all while eyeing the puzzle box and patiently biding her time. The players are doing some fine role playing with her and building up their own backstories and she's fighting alongside them and the treachery when it happens is going to be amazing. They're going to hate her. I'm so excited. Now here's the thing, Victoria. Victoria did not update me on what happened, or at least not in this comment thread. Victoria, if you are watching this, ugh, tell me what happened. That's such a cool thing to have happen. Love it. The Chosen of Mistress says, in my campaign, when I piled the zombies into one massive undead creation, I called it the Glom, like a conglomerate of zombies. That's such a fun name for it. Uh, what did I call it? Like the undead, the zombie Gundam or something like that? Glom's a good name too. I like that. Let's find more, let's find more. This one was all about the red brands. Oh, I put so much effort into editing this one. I kept a spreadsheet of how long I spent on this one and it was like 30 hours or something crazy. And even then I didn't do a good job of timekeeping. So it was probably longer than that. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> this is where Damien Maddox really schooled me. He said that the evil faction of like the, the alliance between the black spider and everybody should be called the spider's web, which is, the correct answer. It could also be called the dark web. <laughs> Someone suggested that as well, I think. This is it, Sarah. Sarah had the best story. I love this. <clears throat> My current long-term campaign started out as the Lost Minds of Fandalva and expanded from there. Two years later, they're currently level 15. So this makes me so nostalgic. The Nothic became a central NPC in my campaign. I personally played up the fact that in the lore, Nothics are essentially liches gone terribly wrong and turned into something of a golem inspired character. His greed for arcane knowledge having turned into a pure greed for shiny objects. The party immediately bribed him into betraying Glassstaff with a random art item they'd gotten from another quest and named him Magpie. The party's name is now Magpie's Mutual as they went on to establish an insurance company <laughs> where for a small annual fee, the party will retrieve any object that you ensue with them. He runs their keep, a refurbished Cragmore keep, while they're off adventuring. Isn't that really fun? The Nothic joined the team. I love that. Oh, reformed villains are such a fun trope. Great story, Sarah. Oh, next video. This is so fun. I'm having such a blast going through all these old comments. Thanks everybody who contributed here. Let's take a look. This is all about King Roll and freeing Gundren from the Cragmore Castle. <laughs> I remember this one. Uh, so the players hated Sildar in Russell's campaign, but in their case, it was because of his seemingly being friendly with the Yanu and the shifty town master meant they were all in on the Black Spider's alliance. They just kept his equipment for themselves and later ran him out of town after leading a revolt against the town master. They also just yesterday decided to arrest Radoff the Druid, but that's a different story. <laughs> Players just don't care about the law. Yeah, we'll arrest you. Are you guys cops? No. No, we're not cops. We just have swords. That's our qualification. And this is our jurisdiction. You, my druidy friend, are under arrest. Let's keep going. What was the next video? Oh, yeah, the Wave Echo Cave. Now, this was tricky because I had to break this into two parts for my own sanity because I didn't know how to fit everything into one video without it just becoming one big bloaty mess. Like, realistically, this should have been one video, these two. Uh, but 
what are you going to do? Sometimes you got to take care of yourself. And I needed to break this into half. Let's see what people say. Andy says, why am I the most attractive patron you've ever seen? Man, Andy's been around forever. Thank you, Andy. Oh, a different Andy has hit us with the Storytime video about the Cragmore Castle. So this different Andy says, in our version of the castle, the goblins were cosplaying what they knew from the paintings of high fantasy swords and sorcery Arthurian legend society. Okay. Lots of fun detail with that. Grohl was a jester and as the jester character was seen near the throne with all eyes on him in the art. So they installed a Merlin-like wizard instead of a priest in the cathedral and the foot soldier knights were in a banquet hall where they placed an apple in a pig's mouth not to eat because apparently that's just what you do at a banquet. I really like that. They're doing all of the symbols of a high Arthurian society without actually engaging with the meaning of any of those symbols. That's such a good idea, Andy. I love it. Now, this is where we break it down room by room. This was a super high effort video. This is super hard to do. I remember Brandon had a really cool story. So Brandon says, I've changed the narrative a bit. Uh, so instead of orcs and ghouls, I've made it robots versus the undead. <laughs> yes. Yes, Brandon, this is great. Uh, the Forge Guardian is a large war forge with a large key for a head named Locke, right? In order to start the forge, they have to get the water flowing into the billows or move the large wooden wheel. And this will ignite the magic flame, then defeat Mormesk, who I made an ancestor of the Rock Seekers. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. That's a good idea. And this will convince the Warforge lock to open the forge, or they can defeat the Warforge and take uh, its key head themselves. <laughs> Brandon, that is sick. I love that. And I've always said with this guardian and this forge and this thing in the puzzle box, you should make it your own. I don't give a lot of suggestions about what it should be. It should be something that you think is cool because this is the kind of skill that you use to make every campaign better. You take the bits that you don't know what they are, you take the bits that you don't think are cool enough, and then you elevate them to something that you think is rad, that you think will be fun for your party, because this book does not know you, and I don't know you either, but I like you. <laughs> Quick little bit of PR right there at the end. <laughs> this one is a really cool story as well. Mary Wargamer says, my party encountered Nundro, who's Gundren's brother. Uh, my party encountered Nundro walking down the passages, whistling a tune with a plate of food. He was surprised by the party, who were surprised by him. Eventually, they figured out that things were not quite right. Nundro twi triggered. Nundro triggered the events of the campaign by trying to sell the location of the cave and capturing the Black Spider's attention. The Black Spider paid him in gold to betray his brothers, and the party realized the extent of this betrayal. Ooh, and they executed the dwarf. Man, I don't know how Gundren would have felt about it like that. I like everything except this last bit. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> that's really going to mess up Gundren's Christmas. <laughs> okay, next we're on to the dragon video. This one was a bit controversial because everyone was super affectionate about the dragon. Tim says that his party begged him to add the dragon back in. So of course you're going to give in to that. You're going to give them a dragon. Uh, so I'm going to add in another key to the forge, but it's optional. When the party rescues Guntrans, he tells them about the secret key item that Neza is not privy to. And if the party can wrest this key out of the dragon's chest, it contains an item that has a one-time use of command monster type spell. Ideally, the party can use this to take control of the Forge's Guardian, which is going to be a Beholder, and then use it to fight against the Black Spider. That's really cool. And the reason I like this is if you just have like one true solution, like the party has to find this item over here, then sometimes if the party ignores that, you might be in a trouble in trouble as far as like your internal game logic and suddenly you have to bend it. Some people don't like doing that. So putting a little bit of redundancy in your game with this, well, there's a second item as well. It's a bit harder to get, but you could go get it. It could help. You know, I don't know. Chuck says, could you do a video of you DMing? You don't want to see me DM. It's not, it's nothing special. It's nothing special. I, here's the thing. I am good at unpacking adventures and going, this is important, this isn't important, and then repackaging it for other people. That doesn't mean I'm necessarily a good dungeon master. You know, I don't play D&D all that much. I just like thinking about it. I just like talking about it. All right, let's go more to the last video. I don't think this one has many comments. Now, this is about the TPK, the TPK situation. Ugh. Platypologist says, worst case scenario, because we are skipping Thunder Tree, I was thinking of re-adding the Druid in to be Nezar's brother and the big bad evil guy. This would be in case um, Nezar gets killed, right? So then read off the Druid is her brother and becomes the bad guy. 
And this would be because he could be trying to stop the mining of the Lost Mines because it's destroying the environment or something like that. And if Nezar, Nezar doesn't die, I'll try to use that same idea to move into another story of sorts and continue the campaign after the Lost Mines of Fandelver. That's a cool idea. I like the idea of giving Nezar a brother to try and extend the story if you want to keep playing after the campaign. Good idea. Kiwi Kiwi says, I like the idea of the dragon cult or the necromancer at the old owl well being candidates for replacing the black spider as a villain. Hmm. I don't know. I love the idea of having the, the necromancer be kind of friendly. I like to subvert the idea of, hey, just because this guy's wearing skulls on his shoulder pads and he's clearly carrying Frostmorn, <laughs> uh, he's not necessarily a bad dude. Just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you are a bad guy, you know? This one's great. Mike says, a few years ago, I ran the Lost Mines of Fandelver, and there was a TPK against Nazar. Then, for the start of the next session, I had them arrive at the Drow prison camp in the Underdark and use the start of Out of the Abyss for their escape back to the ground. They ended up amassing an army and marching them down there, and then destroyed the prison camp for the end of the campaign. I was so proud of my players for their revenge. That's a really good idea. In fact... The Lost Mind of the Fan Devil really does tie in with Out of the Abyss pretty well, because Out of the Abyss is all about Drow and Underdark, and as written, Nezar, uh, Neznar, sorry, official module, is a Drow. That's a really cool idea, Mike. I like that a lot. Although this is the end of the Lost Mind of the Fan Devil videos, I am still making Patreon content about the Lost Mind of the Fan Devil. So if you are a patron, specifically for help with your Lost Minds campaign, stick around, because interspliced with the Storm King Thunder stuff coming up, and the Candlekeep Mystery stuff coming up, we are going to get more Lost Minds of Fandelva content on Patreon. You did it. You made it to the end of the video. All these people downstairs, these are my patrons. They have all joined in the last six months, and they've really elevated the channel. I'm so grateful for your support. If you want to check out my podcast, No Plan, No Problem, you can find it in the bottom right. And hey, stick around for Storm King Thunder content. It's coming up. Get excited. Get your expectations way too high and let me disappoint you. <laughs>